I wanted to say from the very beginning that as a faith-based organization, we do have a little bit of concern. We are, and we question the notion and the concept, the idea of temporary in a program that in the case of, for example, seasonal agricultural workers, you will find workers in, in, in agriculture that have been having come into Canada for 25, 30 years. How temporary is that? Uh, and also the, the 4x4 or the 4 hour rule that, that, uh, that it was mentioned earlier, that doesn't apply to seasonal agricultural workers. Uh, the, you know, it, they'll continue to come, but the opportunity to access a permanent resident status is denied to this crew. So that's an, a gap within the temporary foreign work program, right? That some workers have access to permanent residency, while others don't. Um, I also wanted to use this thing just to, because, you know, sometimes when I'm talking to, to especially in, a, in, a, in an urban setup, right, in an academic setup, a church setup, I feel that the, the, the voices and the faces of migrant workers, the people that we're talking about, right, are not there for a number of reasons. We know that it's not easy for migrant workers to leave their workplace and come here to, to talk with them. So I do accept the opportunity and take the, the, the privilege of, that I have to be able to, to, to be here with you. But for, you know, if it was up to me in an ideal world, it would be these workers who would be telling you their stories and maybe I would be just translating if necessary. But we want to reframe how we think and how we talk about migrant workers. And we want to pose this question, these issues of migrant, the temporary from migrant work program, uh, within the context of Canada's obligation to human rights, universal human rights. Because it is an issue of human rights. There are, and, and it's also labor rights. Um, of course, in the long run, we want to reframe not only the migrant justice or the migrant workers issues, but also the, the whole immigration system we will include other type of uh, immigration including refugees within a human rights uh, frame. And so when we engage with people, that's how we that's the length that we, we the lens that we look at these issues from. Not only the faith theological uh, context, you know, for churches, but also the human right aspect of it. And so, one, you know, the, the top advocacy goals that we have, of course, would be lobby the, 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 the elected uh, government officials to work and to sign, the, to ratify the, the International Convention on the, on the, for the Protection of the Rights of Modern Workers and their Family. And also, of course, a, a path to permanent residence for everybody, not just for certain groups. And, and I do agree with, with, with what you were saying, and I've heard that from my workers as well. Not all of them want to come and stay, and we respect that. But those who want to come and stay and are not given that, that, that opportunity, that is a problem. And so we need to look at that. Uh, it, you already mentioned also earlier that you know, the one of the challenges is, of course, access to settlement services support, right? Health, language, legal assistance, and so on. And so we want to also advocate for that, and that's one of the top advocacy tools for us. So whenever we have an opportunity to talk with government officials, this is what we'll be telling them, right? Some of the things that may help alleviate the situation for migrant workers and the communities where they are is if we don't tie, for example, the permit to a single employer. When the conflicts are right, right, that's when the migrant workers are in a precarious vulnerable situation because of the temporary nature of their uh, status in Canada. So we want to, to look at that. And of course another problem is, you know, there's so many changes that have been introduced periodically, right, to the program to try to address those are bandit solutions. But one of them that is largely ignored for the most part is the implementation of a, uh, of a monitoring system that will actually follow up and make sure that labor standards and human rights uh, are being followed. I mean, the legislation is there, the instruments are there. If those labor laws and human rights instruments were used, probably would, abuses would not be happening. Problem is that nobody is looking at that and trying to, to enforce that. Um, some of the objectives and the goals that we have, of course, is to do what we are doing right now, which is to bring people together from different 
uh, sectors of civil society to work together and, and you know, to advocate together so we can speak with one voice whenever possible. I know that sometimes we may not be in the same page, we may not be in agreement on certain decisions. Well, let's try to find common ground and speak with one voice when, whenever we can. So we try to bring together people, you know, from different uh, areas. We also want to look and make sure that we that we pay attention to the local and regional realities, right? Because you, you mentioned um, your research was in Manitoba, uh, Berlin, and, 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 Ontario. and yes, there are so many regional and provincial differences, you know, from from many many different perspectives. There, there, there's so much you know that can be done and can be said, but uh, we try to do what we can with what we have. Something that is key for us is, is obviously to try to make sure that migrant workers organizations themselves, and, and there are some faces here that I can recognize from uh, organizations like um, uh, Migrante, for example. So try to make sure that these organizations uh, have access to different spaces. And so we try, Kairos will work with organizations, migrant workers organizations to try to create these spaces that sometimes, just because who we are, we might have access to. Uh, so some of the things that we've done is we, you know, we, we, we organize uh, a migrant justice gathering once in, 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 in Ontario, once in Quebec. We did it uh, also in Alberta. Again, to, to be a cognizant and aware of the regional uh, realities and differences that exist. But something that is key to the churches, and this is very, very specific to the churches, is, you know, because of course if we're talking about seasonal agricultural workers, but we live in urban centers, what do we know about it? You know, we eat the tomatoes and we eat the let lettuce, we eat the fruits, the peaches, and everything so on so forth, but we don't know how are they produced, who is harvesting this. So what we need to do is definitely go to with to these places, and that's what we mean by migrant workers. And that's what we have an opportunity to engage with them. And the challenges are, you, you can imagine what they are. I mean, distance, language, and so on and so forth. Um, and here are some of, you know, I want to begin, you would like to always put the pictures there uh, to show you that this is more than just legal, economic, and academic uh, matters. These are human, fundamentally human beings, people like you and I, who have families, who have relatives, who have parents, who have children, who have brothers, who have sisters. And these are some of the, the impacts, you know, the social, uh, the, the, the human social cost of this program and the separation that it, you know, uh, it involves for them. Um, the Canadian Council for Refugees, I don't know if you, you're familiar with that. That is a national, a national organization that Kairos tried to coordinate and work with as much as we can, again, because of the national scope, and Kairos is also a national organization, but again, you know, we can't do it all. No one single organization is going to be able to do or to bring about the changes that we need. No one single sector is going to be, do it, it's going to be able to do it alone, so we need to bring, you know, our, our um, experiences together. So we continue to work with that. Something that we've been doing um, across Canada is try to, you know, implement workshops bringing human rights, a lens of human rights again to, you know, to minor justice issues. And, and, we, and we, we call it equal in dignity and equal in rights. Uh, using human rights to build new relationships. And then you'll be surprised, you know, how, uh, how, how what, I don't know what the word is, but people, when we do this exercise, as you can see, the migrant workers talking to, to you know, uh, a young, you know, person, local person, there who might be a university student, or maybe just a community person. But not until we do that workshop, they didn't know about each other, right? The migrant worker knew that uh, there are issues that they need to address, and they also know about isolation and so on and so forth. But the other person didn't know that there's a migrant uh, organization right in the community with whom they can be working. So doing these migrant justice and human rights workshops have, has been given it's been given an opportunity to us to, to build these alliances. Um, again, right, we, we try to provide just a, a tool, right, a guideline, if you want, for communities to do the workshops. Great. Um, 
you know, just a kind of for the communities to do the workshops on, on their own, but they obviously need to bring on their own perspective, right? Because, you know, living in Toronto, I can't go to Victoria, BC, and, you know, tell them what to do and how to do it. I can work with them, right? But they need to bring their own, you know, reality, the local context, and the regional context to that. Um, at an international level, and, 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 and I think it's important to make a connection internationally because this is not going to end. Unfortunately, it's not going to end anytime soon. And we need to be aware of you know, how uh, this is impacting on, on, on a regional level, so at, at a global level. So Kairos is also involved with churches from uh, Mexico to the Philippines to Africa and so on in trying to address these issues and how we impact migrant workers, where they come from, and where they go to. And the only way to do it is by engaging directly in conversation and dialogue with them. But sometimes migrant workers themselves are left out of the conversation altogether. And that's what Kairos is trying to do with all the, you know, working in partnership with other churches, migrant churches, I should say, uh, to try to bring these issues together. Uh, we have participated in, in something that is called uh, the Global Forum on Migration and Development and also something that is called the International Alliance of Migrants and Refugees. And these have been done in the Philippines and Mexico and Athens, and it's on, and it's on a yearly basis. The Global Forum on Migration and Development is a, a UN-led initiative that for the most part leaves the perspective and the voices of migrant workers completely out for a number of reasons. And so migrant justice organizations uh, under the leadership of, of uh, Philippine organizations um, came up in, in around 2008 with, with in, 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 in organizing the first internet, the first uh, uh, international uh, alliance of migrant, migrant workers and refugees in the Philippines, and that was very important as a, as a counter voice to the official discourse that we were being fed by the Global Forum on Migration and Development. And so you can see that so that picture, I think, is, is not from the Philippines, I think it's from Mexico, but this picture is from Mexico. And I wanted to show you that because, you know, uh, migrant workers are trying to, to bring their voice to these very important dialogues on an international level, but they're being left out, okay? And not only left out, but by force prevented from accessing the grounds so where, you know, Puerto Vallarta, you probably know in Mexico, is, is, a, is a famous tourist resort. <coughs> Very luxurious. Migrant workers were not allowed to, to access those grants. You know, they were stopped by, by the police. And so that's what we tried to, to do, that accompany with them. And these are the people that were, that were blocked from going there. University students, high school students, uh, mothers, relatives of migrant workers, you know, not only in Canada, by the way, because it's, not, it's mostly out of the United States too, from Mexico. But, but you know, that's what, and, and my questions are, you know, are they a threat? And a threat to whom? It is a, this is what they were doing. But if they get a threat, is because they, they, their voices don't want to, you know, it, it's, it's not going to help the official discourse of trying to, to, to equate development with migration, right? And to promote development or to fund, to, to yeah, to finance development through the work of migrant workers and, 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 the, and, the, and their families. I also wanted to show you again that these are women, these are mothers, these are leaders, these are migrants, right? And these are the people who are at the, you know, at the forefront. And I think it's important for us to always keep them in mind whenever we engage in any activity, whether it's research, uh, policy, policy briefing, or whatever, or advocacy, whatever that is. The mothers trying to show the pictures of the ch of the children who have not been found. So this is a very, very uh, again. Um, from a church perspective, of course, it's important for us to, to, to bring that to, to a, a real life level, right? Stop. So I'm going to stop here with this. It is important for us to look at that as, a, as a, a new way of doing theology. And the liturgy, the words for the liturgy, obviously come from migrant workers themselves. And that is pain, hope, land, temporary, invisibility, great, shout, foreign, justice, memory, loneliness, and poverty. These are the languages that are the day to day, or the words that are the day to day lives of my workers and their families. Thank you so much, and I look forward to engaging in the conversation later on.